This week, we're at the Ironman Sweden in Kalmar. Spend time with local hero Jonas Dürbeck. And meet the other contenders for the Ironman crown in Kalmar. Located on Sweden's southeastern coast, the picturesque town of Kalmar proudly hosts an Ironman for the second time. In the university town with just under 40,000 inhabitants, athletes can look forward to fervent crowd support until the very last finisher. This is a two-loop course. The positive side from that is the athletes will be very close to shore and spectators can be very near and cheering them on. On the other hand, it can be crowded in the end. But uh, we will divide them when they are overlapping. So we have a lot of questions uh, from our international athletes about the water temperature. And they are expecting it will be very cold here in Scandinavia. But actually in the middle of August here in Baltic Sea, the condition is like between 19 and 21 normally. The race on two wheels will unfold on a very flat and fast course. Early in the bike, athletes cross the bridge to the island of Erland, the longest bridge in Europe when built in 1972. The bike course is uh, it's constructed like two loops. Uh, the first loop on the island is 122 kilometers long. The second loop is uh, after you have done the overlapping here in Kalmar and it's uh, 50, 58 kilometers long. The highest climb is the bridge and one uh, climb in the Erland the, on the island. Uh, the highest point of the course is 50 meters above sea level. Maybe someone will uh, think of it as a technical course. It's a lot of corners and, uh, and uh, turns to pass. What is special here in Kalmar is they're doing the overlapping here at the finish line. So actually they are passing the finish line three times. And the, the third time they will finish uh, at the finish arch. Sweden's Jonas Dürbach is getting ready for his home race. The morning before, it's time for a mind-easing swim session with his team. Aged 11 at his first triathlon, the 36-year-old is now a 14-time Swedish champion, both on the short and the long course. Coming fourth at the inaugural Ironman Sweden, Jonas is up for bigger things tomorrow. I would really like to go sub eight hours in an Ironman, but it's very difficult to say I will do it in the race tomorrow because there's so many factors that has to be there on the day. So that's more like a, a long-term goal. I want to be as good as I can. And then I think it is possible for me to go sub eight hours. However, Jonas has only run 14 kilometers in four weeks and is a bit worried, his home advantage notwithstanding. I have my days when I uh, have some good runs, but uh, unfortunately I'm a little bit inconsistent in my running, so I have had a problem with uh, one of my calf muscles these last weeks, so, so hopefully it will stay good and I will have a good run. Living in Falun, Jonas has rented a house in Kalmar for race weekend together with his wife Ingrid and his daughter Vera. He faces the challenge of being a pro triathlete, working part-time as an IT consultant and being a father. I owe a lot to my wife and because she's very supportive and understanding and without that it wouldn't be possible. So It's quite easy to combine work and training because you can always do training on early in the mornings, late in the afternoons, but when you have a family, you want to spend some time with the family as well. And I would love to do the race in Kona some year, but it takes a lot of uh, time to qualify as the qualifying rules are. So I don't know if I really have all the time available to qualify. Not aiming for Kona, Ironman Sweden is Jonas's main goal for the season. However, the lightweight athlete is a natural climber and mountains are hard to find around Kalmar. This bike course does not suit me very well because it's a flat course. Normally I like a little bit more hilly course, but uh, it's a race in Sweden and you, you can't miss a race in home soil. And it doesn't suit me bad at all, but um, I wouldn't like another hill or tube. After preparing his transition bags, 
Jonas heads home for a typically early Swedish dinner. Despite not following a strict diet, on the eve prior to the race, the meal is simple. T today I will have a, a pasta, which uh, Vera here has chosen the shape. It will be butterfly pasta. And um, I try to eat a little bit less of uh, like meat and proteins and things containing fiber. So uh, one or two days before the race, just not to be too heavy from all the food that I'm eating. In the meantime, the other race favorites have checked in their bikes. Slovenia's David Pleasure is on a mission to qualify for Kona. The Kalmar bike course will surely play into his hands. Yeah, I think it will suit me, it has to suit me very good because of the flat. I am tall, I am strong on the bike and I can push in the wind. Uh, so I think that's perfect for me. But Ukrainian Anton Bloken returns to Sweden with a clear goal in his mind as well. Last year I was uh, fifth place. It uh, was bad results for me. This year I have a number two of this race and uh, I tried to come into finish line in first place, of course. Former 70.3 world champion Jody Swallow of Great Britain is the ladies' favorite. En route to her first race in Kona, a victory would be a huge boost. I've only done two Ironman before, it's my first Ironman year, but I've come second twice this year, so actually three times if you count a few 70.3s as well, so I'm sick of coming second and I'd like to come first once in a while. Five o'clock in the morning on race day, and with transition barely opened, Jonas Dürbeck is among the very first to ready his bike. The clock is ticking as another contender reflects on the upcoming race. It's for me, I, I'm pretty sure I won't be with the lead swimmers. I just do my race and hopefully I'll be in contention on the, on the, on the marathon. But I mean, it's an it's, uh, individual sport, so you do it, uh, you do your own race. With T1 about to close, athletes move towards the harbor of Kalmar. Like everyone else, the pros are immersed in last-minute preparations. Only a few minutes left before the start, and Jonas Dürbach comes rushing down the pier. Whilst the age groupers are still moving down the jetty, the pros are already waiting in the Baltic Sea. Right now, the water temperatures are mild 20 degrees. It's a two-loop course with no Australian exit, as athletes pass through the harbour of Kalmar two times before swimming along the coastline. They will be carried by the passionate crowds most of the way. At 6.55, the pro race is underway. Battling the waves, Jonas Dubak's yellow cap is in the lead pack right from the beginning. Just minutes later, the moment has finally arrived for all the age groupers. More than 1,700 set out on their long journey to tackle the choppy waters of the Baltic Sea. More than half of them are on their first Ironman mission. And from now on, they have 16 hours to reach the finish line in downtown Kalmar. Up front, Jonas Dürbach sets the pace. While right behind him, local hero Carl Johan Danielson is in a battle with the fastest lady, Jody Swallow. After the first lap, Jonas Dürbach leads the fastest swimmers into the harbor of Kalmar. Also amongst the leaders, Pedro Gomez, Anton Blokin, and Andrei Lyatsky. An enthusiastic crowd is waiting for their local hero. They have come in their thousands to fire up the athletes on their early morning swim. It's Dubak first, Swallow second, Danielson third. But moments later, Jody Swallow puts herself ahead of all the pro men. 
Being in the lead group is not enough for the power swimmer from the UK. Rudy Swallow. Jody Swallow is leading the race. It is a lane. And as the pack leaves the harbour, heading for the second lap in the open water, the battle up front continues. Jody Swallow and Jonas Duback are pushing the pace, unwilling to let either opponent take away the lead. On their second lap, the pros face the difficulty of navigating through the slower age groupers. A very challenging start to a long working day. But after 47 minutes, the six fastest swimmers reach the calmer canal waters. Jody Swallow remains in the lead, followed by Jonas Duback, who has lost his cap out in the frenzied waters. After 3.8 kilometers, Swallow exits the water ahead of all the men, a first in her illustrious triathlon career. But Jonas Duback is hot on Jody Swallow's heels. After the break, can Jonas Duback pull away from his strong competitors? And does anyone have the legs to catch Jody Swallow? We are back on the bike at Ironman Sweden. Athletes cross the bridge over to the island of Erland, where they do the first loop of 122 k before returning to Kalmar and another loop of 58 kilometers. On the bridge, Jonas Duback leads the race, closely followed by Pedro Gomez, Carl Johan Danielsson, Anton Blokin, and Andre Liatsky. As the winds keep picking up, Jonas Duback is clocking a speed of nearly 40 kilometers an hour. Drawing nearer to Erland, Carl Johan Danielsson closes the gap to his compatriot. And as they reach the island, the group of five is back together. On the ladies' side, Jody Swallow is way ahead. While second place Emma Graf is already tackling the bike, Britta Martin is more than 10 minutes behind in third position. Back to the men's race, where Carl Johan Danielsson is setting the early pace, clocking an average speed of about 40 kilometers an hour. But that is seemingly not fast enough for the Swedish powerhouse, as he animatedly tries to urge his competitors in the lead group to increase the pace even further. However, while the Swedish summer smiles on the lead group, they stay together for the moment. In the meantime, Jody Swallow keeps increasing her lead. Britta Martin has moved into second and is 13 minutes, three seconds adrift at the 54K mark. Trailing Martin by nearly four minutes out of T1, Efa Nystrom is now one and a half minutes behind the Kiwi in third. Halfway through the bike, the group of five takes turns setting the pace. In the mix, Pedro Gomez, Carl Johan Danielsson, Anton Blokin, and Jonas Duback. Before long, Danielsson is on the lookout for someone to join him on an escape. And it's around the 100 kilometer mark that Carl Johan Danielsson and Pedro Gomez managed to pull away from the group, with no one else able to follow in the strong headwinds on Erland. And reaching the 109 kilometer mark, Gomez and Danielson already three minutes 35 ahead of their chasers Blokin, Liatsky, and Dürbach. Passing the bridge back to the mainland, Gomez and Danielson keep pushing hard, increasing the gap over the second bunch led by Dürbach with every pedal stroke. Shortly after, the leaders reach the town of Kalmar, cheered on by the ever enthusiastic Swedish crowds. The chase group of Liatsky, Dürbach and Blöken continue to fall behind. <laughs> Towards the end of the island loop, Jody Swallow remains ahead. But behind her, the race for second is on, as Efa Nestrom has closed the gap of nearly four minutes out of T2, overtaking Britta Martin of New Zealand with ease. Will Nestrom manage to get any closer to Swallow?
On the last 20 kilometers, Pedro Gomez finds himself in the lead as Carl Johan Danielsen is struggling to follow the swift pace of the man from Portugal. Encouraged by his move, Gomez shifts up another gear, building up a lead of more than a minute on the last kilometer of the bike. And Pedro Gomez dismounts his bike after a race time of 5 hours, 23 minutes and 41 seconds. It's so windy. And some of the roads are like so rough. I, I hated the bike. I just wanted to get it done. One minute, 22 seconds after Gomez, Carl Johan Danielson gets off his bike. Jonas Dürbach comes into T2 in third, but he is already six minutes behind. Will he be able to gain time in the run and keep Anton Blokin at bay? David Pleasure is nearly eight minutes behind as he grabs his red transition bag. Nearly 22 minutes after the men's leaders, Jody Swallow dismounts her bike. In her lonely race on two wheels, Swallow increased her lead even further. Local favorite Air Fenestrom is now a massive 17 minutes, 23 seconds adrift. A fast and flat run course awaits the athletes, consisting of three loops through the streets and parks of Kalmar. Having passed the finish area two times, athletes cross the finish line on the third. 20 seconds behind Jonas Dürbach out of T2, Anton Blokin quickly closes the gap and powers away from the Swede. Now it's Blokin third and Dürbach fourth. Up front, power runner Pedro Gomez has found his rhythm on the first lap. Behind him, Carl Johan Danielsen cannot keep up after his pace on the bike. Before long, the powerful athlete has to walk as he reaches an aid station. Even though Danielsen resumes his run, Anton Blokin and Jonas Dürbach are coming closer and closer. Still on their way out of Kalmar, Danielsen is caught by Blokin a few moments later. Anton Blokin is now in second position. And as Carl Johan Danielsen is unable to follow, Jonas Dürbach also overtakes his fellow countrymen, moving back to third place. Back to the women's race, where Jody Swallow shows no sign of weakening, extending her lead with every step she takes. In the men's race, David Pleasure is on a mission. Failing to reduce his gap on the lead in the bike, Pleasure is now climbing up the leaderboard in seven league boots. Two minutes behind in T2, Pleasure passes Jonas Dürbach on the first lap, heading back to Kalmar. While Jonas can't follow the tall man's strides, Pleasure is now in third, looking very confident on his way to the front. Approaching the 10-kilometer mark, Anton Blokin is the next target in David Pleasure's crosshairs. As he passes the Ukrainian, he takes second position. Six minutes adrift at this stage, will Pleasure be able to keep his pace and get any closer to Pedro Gomez? Cheered on in the center of Kalmar, Pedro Gomez is in cruise control. However, David Pleasure is continuously reducing the deficit. Behind the leaders, Jonas Dürbach is visibly struggling on his run. Having walked twice in the first 10K, Jonas' wife Ingrid and his daughter Vera are worried about the outcome of this race. 22 kilometers into the run, Jonas can't carry on anymore. Only 14 kilometers of running throughout the last four weeks were not enough to carry Jonas over the finish line today. Even with the pain in the calf, I, I did, just didn't have the stamina uh, to continue running. Uh, of course, I'm very, very, very disappointed, but the only option today was to walk for the last 20k and it just wasn't worth it. Up front, Pedro Gomez is on the final straight towards the finish. Withstanding David Pleasure's pressure from behind, his strong running legs have secured him his first Ironman victory. After 8 hours, 19 minutes and 30 seconds, an overjoyed Pedro Gomez is victorious. Only two and a half minutes later, David Pleasure proudly carries home the Slovenian flag. 
with a sub 250 marathon, Pleasure earns his first run-up position in an Ironman race. On a day of firsts, Anton Bloken finishes an Ironman on the podium for the first time. Uh, this is a dream come true. Like, uh, 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 when you cross the line of an uh, official Ironman in first, like, you think all, about all the hard times you had leading up to the race. I don't know what happened. I, I, I felt great on the swim. I'm usually, I'm usually with the first girl, but not Judy Swallow because she's a really good swimmer. Because Judy can swim with the front pack. I, I'm usually like a minute or two behind the front pack, and I'm always like chasing. And today, like, I just felt amazing from the start. I'm so happy. My Ironman results are getting better and better. Now I had, uh, now I have seventh, fifth, fourth, third, and second place. So we all know what I need to get. I was this close today, but uh, step by step. Racing in a usual flat-out style all along, Jody Swallow was really untouchable today. Winning her first Ironman in under nine hours, a memorable day for ladies Ironman racing. I'm just so happy to have finished right at the moment. Um, no matter if you're in front or the last person on the course, I am, I'm really hurt. And, um, you know, when you win, it, it kind of makes it a lot easier and less painful. I'm um, sure it will be less painful than normal after not coming second. So I'm just so happy to get my first victory underway. And um, it was a tough day today, and I'm proud that I hung out there. Nearly 24 minutes after the proud winner, local hero Erfan Astrom crosses the finish line. Four minutes ahead of Britta Martin from New Zealand. As the Swedish sun slowly takes its leave of Kalmar, all the heroes of the day who have overcome the greatest challenges to even make it to the start line dance down the magic carpet to cross that much dreamt about Ironman finish line. Ursa Lundström, 2012 Ironman Sweden champion, cheers home the final finisher. It was an all Ironman weekend in Scandinavia, as Copenhagen was host to the first Ironman ever held in a European capital. More than 2,800 athletes took the plunge in the waters of an artificial lagoon just outside town. Henrik Heldlund was the fastest swimmer in the pro field, exiting the water after 47 minutes and 19 seconds. More than two minutes, 20 seconds later, the fastest woman, Lucy Reed, was the next to finish her swim, with second place Jens Pedersen Bach in tow. Henrik Hildelund increased his lead throughout the bike, and after 63 kilometers, the chase group was more than five minutes adrift. In the ladies' race, Efa Vuti had taken the lead early in the bike, increasing the gap to more than seven and a half minutes by the 93-kilometer mark. Hildelund was the first to arrive at T2, and as he set out on his run, he was nearly nine minutes ahead of his fellow competitors. So he needs to find his pace and keep going. It's going to be a while before anybody catches him. So he has up, 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 and he looks really good. While Jakob Franzen was in second place, Jan Pedersen Bach was more than 12 minutes back at this stage. Early in the marathon, Efa Vuti was more than 18 minutes in the lead. In a closely fought battle, Jens Petersen Bach overtook the longtime leader Hildelund towards the end of the race. After eight hours, 12 minutes and 41 seconds, Petersen could call himself the first Ironman Copenhagen winner in history. Completing the men's podium, Henrik Hildelund in second and Espen Hofgart in third. In a dream race for the young Austrian, Eva Vuti wins her first ever Ironman and in a record time of 8 hours 37.36, making her the third fastest woman in Ironman history. With the final cutoff only a few days away, David Pleasure has qualified for Kona, while Ironman UK champion Daniel Hawksworth can also book his ticket to the World Championship after coming fourth at Ironman Mont-Tremblant. 
In the ladies' rankings, Mary Beth Ellis is now the new leader, following her title at the Ironman North American Championship in Mont Tremblant, whilst Jody Swallow adds another 2,000 points to her account. Next, we travel to Ironman 70.3 Telemse in Austria, where we follow the newly crowned Ironman champion Eva Vuti facing a tough challenge at her home race. <laughs> 